Okay, I hope the sound works. Let's see if this actually works. Um, all right, so uh, welcome to uh, How to Type, uh, the first How to Type live stream for the month of August. Uh, I'm your host, C.S. Joseph, and uh, tonight we're gonna be doing uh, some typical uh, psychoanalysis, uh, psychoanalysis on uh, various subjects, uh, whoever, uh, the audience chooses, uh, but uh, that's given, you know, for uh, uh, super chats and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, we are typing people. Yes, overclock your MSI. Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. Azure, for for that. Uh, and uh, yes, you want to see the after afterburn, of course. Um, can you guys like actually hear me? I'm coming in just fine, right? Um, so, hey, Lucas, how you doing? And Patrick Earthridge, uh, sound is working. Thanks for the heads up. Really appreciate it. I'm also very happy right now that uh, my camera in the, in the background right here is like, oh, you know, not coming out of like the top of my head. So that's kind of nice. Um, and uh, God bless her. Uh, Railgun is uh, cooking uh, turkey tacos tonight. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, having some turkey tacos uh, uh, with her immediately following the stream. Uh, so... Uh, it's, uh, this would be great. Um, uh, insert, uh, you know, some random ad of Bill Clinton uh, drinking water, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah. Glad the sound is working tonight. Uh, so, let's talk about the format. Uh, yes, I am in my INTJ shadow right now because streaming actually takes a lot out of me. Uh, and... Uh, like, it really takes a lot of me. I mean, we just did, like, a 90-minute stint with uh, John Brisson, uh, which I believe will be already available on the YouTube that uh, anyone uh, could be able to listen to. He's an INTP. He's really good at uh, health-related uh, content, and it was just great to have him on uh, the show as a uh, on the channel, uh, you know, as a... As, as, a, as a as a collaboration, I guess. Uh, I don't often do uh, collaborations. Um... And I mean, let's be honest, I don't often do collabs because uh, who am I gonna collab with? Like, let's be honest, who am I gonna collab with? Am I gonna collab with people who are like in the MBTI community of YouTube? No, I'm not because I fundamentally disagree with all of them when it comes to uh, how they approach Jungian analytical psychology. Although I really like that Bryant Chambers guy, but everybody else don't really, not really interested uh, in, in collaborating with anyone, uh, although I've gotten tons of requests, but as soon as I say no, they all get really mean. So it's like, mm, what am I supposed to do about that, right? Uh, I am not doing uh, fictional typing tonight, but I mean, I probably could, I guess, um, uh, because all the MBTI YouTubers are all wrong. Yeah, well, fair enough. Um, so, uh, I uh, I am going to actually I think we already did Tyler Durden uh, in the past. Uh, there is a link on uh, our website at csjoseph.life. You can actually look at everyone we've uh, previously typed. That way, if you put in a super chat, you just don't know specifically. Hi, Railgun. <laughs> nice. <laughs> ah, I just I just uh, I just got bombed there. No, I'm just kidding. Um. Betty from Riverdale, huh? So anyway, here's here is uh, here is the uh, format. You guys give me a super chat, and I will type somebody. Uh, and whoever who has the current highest super chat, and I'll be bringing up my little uh, Discord window so we can actually see who has the highest super chat. That's the person that I'm going to be typing. And if no one super chats, well, then I guess we're going to be typing who I choose to type. And then we have. Joseph House right in with 12 bucks for NF the Rapper, like a boss. And uh, I guess uh, Mr. Joseph House is the boss right now. So, aye aye, Captain. And uh, let's get down to this, I guess. Uh, I hope NF is an NF. That, that would actually be funny. That would be very funny. And as per uh, Railgun's request, we're going to be typing NF with the rainbow uh, pen, um, because that's what she has to do. Um, she likes that rainbow pen, so uh, we're just gonna go uh, go through it. So, okay, uh, let's see here. And NF, uh, where is my? Oh, apparently I do not have my uh, 
my YouTube thing up here. Stand by one second. Let's get that going. YouTube. Pop. All right. Current live streams. Yes, I'm aware of current live streams, but I want to actually do NF the rapper interview. Awesome. Do you have any preferred interviews? Um, Josh interviews NF. NF funny hilarious moments compilation. Okay. Uh, let's let's do Josh interviews NF. Uh, NF tops a new song. Why? Okay. Cool. Let's uh let's let's do uh, let's do this one. And then we bring it up. Oh, it's got his it's got his music in it. Don't really want that. So let's get going over here. With the Union Jack is our I'm not sure you guys can hear flag. it. That's the flag that's our flag now. This is the one. We know if the volume is good enough. The we can vote for to maybe become the new flag. Why are they changing what? flags? Well, they just think <laughs> that they're, they're bored of that one. The, the, <laughs> everyone... <laughs> um, what are you? Re what one do you prefer? Uh, that one. You like the yeah. new one? Yeah. Oh well. Oh. Oh, you have seen the nation's divided. <laughs> But the old one's good too, right? Yeah. Oh. No, the old one's good, man. It's, it's whatever, man. It's your country. It's whatever, man. It's your country. Wow. I, are you guys like going like super background type with this guy? Because that's what I'm doing, you know. Uh, NF being the guy in, in black and the Nike hat. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that would be... Uh, um, let's get Mila Kunis so I can confirm that she's an ESTP. Fair enough. Uh, uh, we'll uh, definitely take a look at that for sure. Um, I wonder if anyone's typed Jimquisition. No, no, not just for the lulz. Uh, so, Oliver Tree. Okay, I see the Super Chats coming, and we'll get to them, guys. Uh, so, let's continue with Josh, uh, the NF. Uh, and so far, based on what I could see, uh, Mr. Josh, uh, or Mr. NF here is uh, responding. Uh, and NF the rapper, that is, excuse me, on that. So, hey, man, you can do whatever you want. It's your it's your country, you know. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's basically an SE or NE uh, perception, I would say, within the top two um, within the top two functions initially. So, definitely, uh, probably an introverted decision making uh, function within the top two functions for Mr. NF. So let's keep going. He's an INFP. Okay. Well, apparently the uh, audience says he's an INFP. Well, let's verify uh, said audience uh, for that. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, okay, politics is done there, that's, it. that's uh, enough of that. Um, uh, in your song Notepad, which is amazing by the way, oh, thank you, man. Um, you talk about, um, you, you have a line where you talk about uh, how you tried it, the old curse words thing, but it didn't really work out for you. Yeah. What made you decide to, instead of going down the same path that, you know, like nearly every rapper would go down, yeah. what made you choose to go down the path of talking about real life issues and, and, and your own life and, and how you've de dealt with that stuff? Um, well, in that song, it kind of describes a bunch of it, but uh, like I say, said in the song, it just like didn't do it for me. It was like, yeah. uh, when you're younger, I th a lot of people when you're younger, you just kind of do what you see other people do. Um, just because it's a natural Ooh, that's an S E and I statement. I really, I'm really into hip hop, so I would just do what I watched other people do and mm. talk about. I it would do something. what other people do because I saw what other uh, people yeah, do. S E. I wanted to be different, and music became something different for me personally as I got older too. Like me talking about personal issues, um, it was easy for me to talk about that because that's always been like my place to go to bring my problems. So. It's just kind of like a snowball effect of a lot of things, maturing, figuring out who I want to be, what I want to sound like, and what I don't want to sound what like. What I want to sound so, like, what I don't want to sound like, S-E-N-I. Some pretty real stuff and some pretty yeah. heavy stuff in some of your songs. Do you find that um, when you're singing, like maybe at a concert or whatever, you've got friends, you've got family there, do you ever find it hard to sing to those people who know you but might not know the full extent of, of what's actually in your songs? Like, And are they ever like, Oh, like, I didn't know he was dealing with that or I didn't know he was struggling with that. Do you ever find that awkward or anything? That's actually a really good question. Um, not, I don't really find it awkward just because, uh, I don't know, sometimes I have thought of that. Like, I'll be like, you know what, I don't really tell anyone about this. So yeah. It's kind of like, um, but I don't know, I don't feel awkward because when I'm on stage, man, it's like a different world. Yeah. It's not like a... 
I don't know. I just don't think about it. So, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if my family, like, if someone hears me talk about something, because it's something I really actually deal with. But, yeah, sometimes I'll think about that, but it doesn't, like, it's not, like, an awkward thing. It's almost, it's just more of a realization of, like, I'm talking about something maybe people don't know. You know and and I mean? do you think it's helped? Talking about something people don't know. Interesting, interesting state, statement. It'd be an F-I-T-E statement, if I believe so. But uh, let's keep going. Being it able to release it? It definitely helps, but it doesn't fix it. Yeah. Um, and that's something I'm realizing, because uh, I'm doing the second record right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just realizing, because the second record's actually deeper than the first record. And so it's like, for me, it's just making me realize more things about myself. And as I mature as a person and my music matures, um, it's starting to make me realize, like, I got to figure something out, you know what I mean? Because the first record was very, like, this is me, these are the problems I'm dealing with. The second record is a lot of that as well. It's just, it's really emotional. Like, there's a mm. lot of emotion on the record. You've, on your on your tracks, uh, I mentioned you collabed with a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. um, who's the next... Who's the next people on the list for you to collaborate with? Eh, it's kind of, the record's pretty much done, but I can't Well, I know you'd like to collab with Ed Sheeran, right? I'd love to collab with, collab with Ed Sheeran, yes. Well, he hangs out quite a bit here in New Zealand. So Dude, maybe hit him up, man. Here. Give him my phone number, bro. Well, I don't personally know him, but... No, <laughs> yeah. no but, I, lo um, I love... Hit him up, bro. Give him my phone number. <laughs> yep, that's uh, F-I-T-E, but a very uh, humble one for someone uh, so responding. Uh, definitely, um, definitely seems a little informative. Um, so, I mean, he might be nice, FP. Uh, I could say for a fact he's definitely pragmatic, definitely concrete, um, and uh, I, I, I would say interest-based because of his motive and whatnot, but uh, we'll uh, take a look at that. I don't know why that button is there. That was odd. Uh, hopefully we're not gonna see that button again. I love it, Jim. Well, maybe you need to hang out here a bit more, and then, then yeah. maybe you'll make. Okay. All right, so let's go to a different interview. Channel 96.1, Brooke Morrison. Was Mansion in 15, Therapy Session in 16, and Perception uh, in 17. And it's been like a huge, like awesome transition um, as far as like, Let You Down was my first time ever going to radio. Right. So first of all, I appreciate you guys like playing that. Oh my God, we appreciate um, you. <laughs> yeah, so no, he's definitely an artist. Uh, like we have him, he's like an artist and he's pegged. Me, honestly, yeah. like the support from the fans with, with uh, just everything from views to streaming to sharing radio everything yeah. so um it it's been cool it's been something i had hadn't really like go around all i just did a tour in europe and nice. uh, going around the okay. world and seeing like people in places that you've never even been to people right. like knowing knowing your stuff but it's also like interesting too because when you've never been on radio um you're used to like you do your own shows and like everyone knows your songs and then yeah. you know even this tour sometimes it's interesting like people don't even know who you are yet right and then people don't even know who you are yet talking about uh, more FITE he's also very control uh, interest-based um, I think it's pretty obvious here uh, an F is an ISFP there you have it folks an F is an ISFP so uh, yeah let's see so I... all right cool uh, let is uh, let's get down to that here and uh, let's switch into the next person which we'll find out in a second um, guys super chats are gonna be open for the next 20 minutes and then they're gonna be closed uh, and then we'll just finish out the rest of the show with however much time we have left trying to keep this uh, no longer than 90 minutes uh, the show would be 60 to 90 minutes for today uh, so just uh, be advised uh, with that as well and the highest super chat gets priority uh, for uh, who is being typed, et cetera, as I uh, fix this thing right here. So let's pull out Discord and see what we actually got going on here. Just did NF the Rapper. We got uh, 10 Canadian dollars from uh, Lev. Uh, and then 15 for Oliver Tree with Lucas Marcus. So it looks like that, Lucas Martinez. So Oliver Tree looks like at the top bid currently. So uh, let's uh, let's go in that direction. So there's the current bids, guys. So check out your bids if you want to add to them and whatnot. But we're going to be doing Oliver Tree next with Lucas Martinez. Martinez. Okay, Oliver Tree. And uh, es tiempo para Roja. Oliver Tree. Cool. 
Olive tree. All right, Oliver Tree. Uh, is it wrong that I don't know who Oliver Tree is? Because I like, I have no idea. Um, like I have no idea. The Chain Smokers interview uh, Oliver Tree. Okay. Some things, you, one of the things you should know about Oliver Tree. Okay. The Klein versus Oliver Tree. Is this bowl cut actually real? Let's see, Oliver Tree chilling in a pool. Uh, why are you gay? Funniest African uh, interview ever. Okay, fair enough. Um, trying to find some good uh, interviews here. So, okay. I guess I have no choice but to do this one. What's poppin'? I'm Oliver Tree. And I'm Alex. I'm Drew. And the dog, okay. Hey, dude, can we smoke back here? Yeah, man. Yeah, go for it. Hey, shit, where do you get your weed from? My granny dude, she deals. What are you guys thinking? What are you guys thinking? Wow, is this guy an ESFP? <laughs> T-E-F-I, for sure. It's pretty good, your grandma's got good weed. That's what I'm saying, dude. Bro, I am fucking hot. Bro, I can feel that shit. Bro, I can feel that shit. <laughs> I don't feel anything. <laughs> As they're like obviously acting here. What's your music videos, dude. What the fuck's good? They're you guys making internet. shit? They're on the internet, yeah. You ever directed a music video? Yeah. That's what I fucking thought. Dude, you wanna go? Uh sure. Where? Here? Let's take this shit outside. We're outside. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Outside. <laughs> you want to go, little man? So you're like the third best razor. This seems very uh, pragmatic. Uh, That's impressive. Did you? How, how, how long? You. When did you get your first scooter? Um. Well, I started scootering when I was six. Like this guy could actually be an INTJ who's cognitive the transition to ESFP. That's what I'm really hoping we're gonna get out of this. So we'll see how that goes. Six years old. Uh, I got my first razor Christmas 2001. Is it true that you lost your virginity on a razor? Okay, dude, yeah. come on, dude, come people. on, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I don't kiss and tell. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. I may or may not have lost my virginity on a scooter. Oh, <laughs> I knew it! And you do background vocals for Shawn yes. Mendes, right? Well, you weren't supposed to say that. He told me. Come on, yeah. dude, you know it's a ghost story. Come on, he just can't keep his mouth shut. But yeah, dude, Shawnee boy. Yep. <laughs> you know it's a ghost fighter. He keeps making SC statements because he's talking about other people. And it's it's becoming more and more obvious that he's actually SFP NTJ Quadra as we continue to move through. But let's uh, let's keep going. Boy, I love working on a shit. Uh, so the name Chainsmokers. This is so, so overly edited. Are you guys like <laughs> chain smokers or what's the deal? No, smoking's terrible for you. Yeah, it's, it's you think what kind of fucking message is that, dude? I mean, it's Chain no smokers, come anymore. on, that's fucking disgusting. I, I know, would like, never have that as my name. Did, did you know that uh, my mom actually wanted to name me Oliver instead of Alex, but she then thought it was the stupidest fucking name? Okay, ever. dude, shut the fuck. Dead up, serious. Bro. Same with my. I was. Dope, yeah. I was gonna be Oliver instead of. Well, Drew. dude, that's yeah. actually dead serious. Thank no. God, that's one or two. Wait, is that true for you? Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah, but mom was like, it's a stupid fucking yeah. name. That's I'll so tell you wild. right now, dude, that's two less stupid all of <laughs> She didn't want me to be called Ollie, though, for sure. That's a lot of pressure, dude. Yeah. <laughs> now I feel like my name should have been your guys' names. I'm just trying to remember what their names were. All right, next question. What is it like to be the most hated EDM act in America? I don't know. I said. It is very oh! exaggerated. <laughs> all right, dude. That's not cool, dude. That's my boy. <laughs> You know his way real back. Name? Yeah, dude, Antoine. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you on December 26, 2002? My first yeah. fucking dog died that day. <laughs> Sorry, dude. So every time you land at the airport, does it say stupid, a little ugly boy on the okay, side? Okay, that's not fucking funny, dude. Talk about your billboards a little bit now. Okay, like. yeah, which one? There's None of them. One. I think there's only one of them. I'm going to switch Two. to a different uh, interview Welcome. Here. Popping out of my boy's nose. <laughs> I've been sick for a while, bro. Damn. <laughs> Just don't hit that face. <laughs> <laughs> um, went to Santa Cruz. I, I lived there for like seven or eight years, man. So I was there for a while. Ela lived there with me for a year. Yeah. So I was curious, what it's was it like for you guys um, 
as non-local. So I was curious, what's it like for you guys as non-local? Okay, fair enough. Uh, it's very uh, initiating uh, right there. It's pretty initiating. So that's pretty cool to get that. In Santa Cruz, where there's any animosity yes. towards you, was there any there kind was. of vicious locals coming after you? What was that like? Well, I wanted to ask you something similar because I right know there. I noticed that the locals there, there is some hostility. Straight up, they go salt the slugs. Right. I was like, that's what we oh. always say. So, did you hate the students there? What was your vibe with the students in the college? Basically, you're taught to hate them. Really? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. Uh, but there is a hostility over ownership of the beach because they're the ones who mm. spend the most time there and then they help clean it and certain things they treat the it as if it's their own the beach. The surfers? Yeah, the, ones the surfers the and anyone who yeah. the beach. Yeah, and so I think it, it stems with just frustration of having to share something that isn't even theirs. So I think they're like confused as far as taking ownership for something we all own. Mm. You know, and like we should all have access to the beach. Doesn't matter if you live over the hill. Mm. But the end of the day you know there's just a, I think it comes with any beach town there's a certain hostility with over the hill valleys the slugs and so right. I'm just here I'm here to just kind of stop that just let them know the beach is for everybody here, let them come on down you're gonna get jump your, in there you're gonna get your ass beat next time you're that, at Santa Cruz. those locals are gonna be I'm not happy. scared of anyone well there's some crazy low I almost got dude I was at the beach actually it happened at the beach I was there with my friends and some lo some drunk local guys were trying to start some fights with us, Where were you and we doing? had to bounce. Nothing. We were minding our Pretty own business. Pretty direct. They were trying to mack on our girls. Holy shit! Really? I mean, either weren't together at the time. Wow. But there were some girls there. I guess I've never experienced it, but I wasn't there enough, and I didn't experience too much of it, to be honest with you. Good. Um, I'm glad to hear that, man. I hope it was a, a good time for you. I've guys. always wondered what it's like to grow up there. Yeah, it's it's a trippy place to grow yeah, up. Yeah, it totally. is. <laughs> Uh, well, places that can produce all of our trees got to be a fucking wild spot. <laughs> we had some wild days. I'll say that. But at the end of the day, it's definitely, um, there's a, a darker side to it that's pretty plagued in drug use. I, yes. I, you know, me and Ela frequently go that there. That shocked me when I moved there because I moved there from Israel. Right. So that was the first place you moved from Israel. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how was that coming from Israel? Look, so he starts talking about Israel, completely new point, right? So he's still initiating, right? It's it's still an initiating point. So he keeps initiating new points as if like he's controlling the conversation. I, I we might have an ENTJ on our hands. Uh, we'll see, but uh, definitely, definitely is looking like it for sure. Um, uh, so yeah, he's definitely initiating additional points. He's being direct. He's choosing his role in the conversation. Uh, so let's keep going. Not, I mean, I loved it. I still do. It's, it's a special place. place you but know. what is. you just said, so true. Like it's like everyone there does drugs and like serious. You know, right. even my uh, a lot of my college friends ended up like smoking heroin, right? And getting yeah. into some story. gnarly shit. So if you guys actually notice, this guy right here in the uh, in the interview itself, the guy in the black shirt, that guy, I'm getting like so INTJ from that guy. But then you compare him to like Oliver Tree. Notice the difference, because this guy, he's very movement. All of her tree ain't as movement as this guy, for example. You know what I'm saying? But then you look at her. She's obviously a background type, and she's also, like, um, you know, background type, likely INTP. So you have, like, these two people who are doing this podcast. They seem like they're a couple. It's INTP, INTJ, uh, who is interviewing all of her tree, for example. So just use that from, like, a comparative analysis standpoint, right? So... Like, not Damn. just like oh a little joint it's like serious that's what you do in the woods like bonnie dune these motherfuckers go and start cooking meth up there like one yeah. it's like something in the air up in those pine trees or whatever those redwoods straight up you know what i'm saying something's off dude i can't put my finger down it it's like twin peaks but meth instead of like supernatural shit you gotta stay away from that <laughs> stuff man but um i me and Elo often go back there yeah and I feel like I've noticed it more and more. Like, there's this area where downtown on on uh, Pacific, like over the bridge. What's the name of that street there? The bridge. I mean, the guy in the black shirt. I don't know his name. His name is Ethan. He's direct responding movement. So he's a finisher type. So I don't know what you want to say. Like seriously. That connects to Pacific. It's like a uh, mission or some shit. I don't know. Dude, I'm not good with names. Well, anyway, there's an area there. I'm not good with names because I can't remember because I'm an SE user. LOL. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 
So definitely SFP and TJ Quadra for sure. Um, haven't seen much systematic. He's, still, he's mostly like just like, eh. You know, he'll initiate, and then he just not doesn't really care as like, much. This shows off the rails. Marking plate. Mark like something that is coveted from the world's <laughs> eyes. Like it's made it from the, my perspective as an artist. It gave me a shaft really bad, and now I'm constantly concerned about what I can and cannot do. I'm having to compromise my visions. I have to be concerned about what I show, and it's at the end of the day, it's not really anything. You didn't really realistic. I mean, there's no. birds flying out of my head, like it's a cartoon. <clears throat> I hundred percent agree. Music video, it's so obvious. Yeah. Well, I don't understand because there's a lot of huge music videos with billions of views that are showing raunchier shit. Now, making an art piece about what I've seen in my surroundings in my life, right. and and I grew up with. It's talking about making a lot of art, which is indicative of ISFP subconscious, which is also a pretty, uh, pretty interesting standpoint. And uh, yes, I, I, I know um, they're uh, definitely uh, intoxicated. So, but uh, definitely putting it down for control on that one for sure. And, uh, and what he's saying right now with his production, he's actually talking about like, you know, he's being systematic. He's talking about, you know, his artistic approach with how he structures his videos, et cetera. And it's all from his point of structure, which is uh, you know, indicative direct initiating control within the structure type, right? So he's being systematic in the process. Talking about uh, uh, birds flying out of his head, et cetera, you know, a very, uh, a very abstract uh, point of view as well. So I'm gonna do it like a, another minute here, but honestly, this guy is seeming like an ENTJ to me. Family that was Catholic on one side, and so that was... That is an ISFP focused ENTJ. Kind of shoved down my throat, and mm -hmm. this is a byproduct of that. It's not something I try to do. It's just this is what it is. Well, making art about your life, you know. And certainly, you're not. And the I've only. been censored for that. It's all about making art for your life, but I've been censored for that. Very pragmatic point of view. Uh, it's also uh, SE, uh, SENI as well. Uh, so, and he's he's initiating additional points. So. He's not an INTJ. He's he's direct. He continues to be direct. So like he's direct initiating control. I mean that's it. Like just by process elimination on the type grid alone, we know he's a structure type. Period. End of story. So like what do you want me to say? Like which you want me to say he's an ENFJ? That's just not going to happen. He's pragmatic. So he either has to be an ESTP or an ENTJ. Are you really going to start telling me, you know, like Donald Trump, you know what I'm saying? Like, are, are we going to go in that Trump direction? Is this guy like Joe Rogan? You know what I'm saying? Is this guy like uh, Dwayne Johnson, the ESTPs, right? So, so no, no, he's SFP and TJ Quadra. Uh, he's not really spitting out facts. It's all about, uh, you know, reference points, but it's all about the art. It's about what people think about the art and how popular it is. I've been censored. Uh, that was another statement he made. It's also TEFI. So anyway, Bottom line is, guys, uh, whether you agree with me or not, Oliver Tree's an ENTJ. So there you have it. All right, we're going to do another one here. So let's see. So I erase, erase those. Nice. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. So that was Oliver Tree at $15. We have a uh, $20 one by Peter Widget or Widget, sorry if I say your name wrong, uh, at uh, Matthew Bellamy. So we're gonna do Matthew Bellamy next. Awesome. Matthew Bellamy. Okay. Matthew Bellamy interview 2019 sounds good Virgin Radio let's see music Matt Bellamy uh, interview let's Thanks so much. How's, how does he feel to be back uh, it feels great to be back here I've got some great memories of this uh, festival and this crowd the volume is super low here. sorry guys we were playing like um, two, many many years ago maybe 12 years ago we played here uh, a few bands before uh, Limp Biscuits, and that was a very different type of time alright Killer Mike, you mean to tell me that Taylor Swift and Oliver Tree are, have a lot more in common? You know what I mean? Because Taylor Swift is an ESFP. So are you saying that 
you know, t- I mean, I don't see Taylor Swift going over the top with a, a subconscious cognitive transition, you know, where they're aspiring uh, with their aesthetic. I don't see uh, Taylor Swift doing that. I see Taylor Swift trying to get more educated and more strategic with how she goes about uh, delivering her presentation. Uh, whereas someone like Oliver Tree, also similar to Ryan Johnson, who did uh, Star Wars Episode Eight, it's all about campiness. They're very campy people. You see what I'm saying? So. I'm in music, but I remember for us and for them, the crowd was just uh, one of the best crowds I've ever seen. Uh, really, really great audience. How did Muse evolve since then until now? Uh, yeah, we've been we've been through many changes musically. We've you know every, every album we always try different things. You know, so uh, uh, we've we've experimented with everything from uh, hard rock to uh, kind of electronic music to uh, uh, classical orchestral music, film music. Uh, I think we've uh, yeah definitely evolved a lot since then. How do you feel that Portuguese audience? embraced you because you, s- you sell out every time you come you come here to play and do you see any difference in the Portuguese crowd? Uh, it's always been it's always been great here you know it's, it's one of the first uh, sort of southern European uh, countries that we felt really had a strong connection with us you know because the audience really stood out as being very passionate you know and, and then shortly after that we experienced great, you know, great crowds in Spain and also in Italy but I remember Portugal seeming like the first kind of southern European uh, country that really embraced music. Yeah. You have a, a particular style that's very revendicative. You 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 talk about. I know, right? It could be ASMR. Issues. Your last album was uh, issued in 2015. I can't boost the volume anymore. From from that year, uh, how do you evaluate the 2015 and 2018 playing here? Um, if I, you mean from playing then to playing here now, or no, uh, just how do you fa- because you face the world with a oh, very particular view? Um, yeah, I mean it's it's. I feel like we're entering the 80s again, like the beginning of the 80s, like this kind of movement to the kind of uh, sort of strange politics and uh, very sort of, I don't know, really, I mean, everyone knows what's happening in America and everything. It's very strange. I live there, you know, so I live in America. And, but I think uh, I think it's possible that sometimes uh, the sort of media can make it more scary than the reality. You know, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of words, there's a lot of bluster and a lot of talk, but the reality maybe is, uh, is maybe not so bad, you know, I think uh, yet. <laughs> you know, it, c- it could become bad. I don't know, but uh, but at the moment, I feel like it's mostly um, people just saying things and uh, and the media ex- exaggerating things that kind of creates this feeling of hysteria and panic, you know, and and worry about the future. But that's always been there, really. You know, I think um, I think people are kind of you know connecting with each other again in a more sort of uh, in a more human way at a time when it seems like really the kind of establishment is really becoming a little bit difficult to understand. You know. Yeah. There's Seems pretty abstract. It's been linked to, to Muse, uh, resistance. Nowadays, it's uh, a term that's implied in more social terms and political Put terms. Put S-I-N-E in now initially, but how do you see let's that? see. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember we had a song called Uprising uh, in 2009, and, uh, and I feel strange about this song because, uh, you know, the song was kind of written from the idea that, you know, the, popular, the people's popular feeling is being ignored, you know? Uh, I did not expect this type of popular opinion, which is happening now, to be the one which kind of takes takes control. You know, so it's quite a shock, really. And uh, so I think when I when I was writing that song, I think I was hoping for more like a I was hoping for more like a movement ag- against sort of um, sort of capitalism, corporate control, and and in favour of environmental change. You know, and I think um, but instead what has happened has been a sort of more a move to a more sort of aggressive. Um, now this guy is like super TIFE. He's just spouting out facts over and over and over. Very, very TIFE. Uh, he is not really referencing his own self-importance or what other people think as much. He even made a statement earlier about how you know it's like, hey, people are going to value this and value what we're doing. Uh, so uh, that's very TIFE. I still, while I have a point down for SI and E, I'm not sure because I I could really make the argument between SE and SI so far. So we'll we'll see. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, temperaments, interaction styles, I still need a little bit more information to get into my personal introverted sensing before I can start drawing comparisons. So, kind of, I don't know, anti togetherness kind of uh, type feeling, which is very strange. You know, so you know, I've learned that actually populism can go in in very different routes. You know, very bad routes. So, you know, I was hoping for a different type of populism, basically. Yeah. You arrived here in Portugal. That was an affiliative political statement. Very interesting. 
So we could actually have an idealist on our hands here. Uh, with the, the, the same uh, album that you played in Pavilion Atlantic, Drones. Uh, what can the, your fans expect for tonight? Uh, yeah, so uh, we're kind of in a transitional point um, between you know, the last album and we are right now in the middle of the finished. Transitional point. Uh, so that was an SE statement talking about we or our band and what we've been doing, etc. He keeps making we've been doing. He's not really making so many I did this, I did that uh, uh, statements. While he is talking the past tense, it's mostly from like a group of others or other people. He's not really talking about himself personally. And whenever this interviewer asks him something about himself personally, he instantly responds with, well, we've been doing this, etc. So no, he's not an INTP. There's just no way. Uh, I'm thinking probably STP NFJ Quadra, uh, and there's a good chance he's an INFJ. So let's keep looking. Finishing the new album, uh, which is going to come in November this year. And uh, so we, we've already put two songs out which are going to be on that album. Uh, so we'll play them tonight, which will be Full Contagion, Dig Down. And instead of playing like a drones heavy concert, we're going to play more like Dig Down. So yeah, this is responding. He's staying within the context of the conversation. Uh, he's also movement with how he's moving his hands around, and he's not really informative. He's direct. I, I definitely think he's a finisher for sure, uh, especially since he made some statements earlier talking about you know finishing the most recent song uh, that he had done and and that they had done basically and how that was really important. Uh, so, like a mixture of songs from all the different albums tonight. So it's almost like a sort of greatest hit set, but with a couple of new songs. And, um, and it's kind of transitional, really. This is, this is us really feeling, getting ready for the new tour, which is going to begin. Yeah, Flash, like, why not an uh, INFJ? Uh, like, like explain that. Uh, why not? There's plenty of INFJ artists that are capable of playing the guitar because they're aspiring with their ESTP subconscious. Like, why not? This guy would be an ESTP-focused INFJ. So, like, do you guys not understand that, you know, individual types have flavors and subtypes? This is why people think Enneagram is a thing, but Enneagram is inaccurate, right? It's because Enneagram actually is really utilized to detect your cognitive focus. The problem is, is that Enneagram itself is pretty limited in its scope. Your chip, your mindset, how, do, how does that change? Uh, well, actually, this, this uh, album we're making has, has been a deliberate... This album that we're making is being a deliberate, uh, anything deliberate then that has something to do with that album that they're making is definitely an S-E-N-I statement, hardcore, any stating a fact, etc. Uh, experiment to like mix the two mentalities together, you know, so we've, um, we've, made, we've made sure we do at least like one or two concerts every month uh, for the last year with the feeling that we have to actually still be very strong on stage, you know, and so I think a little bit of that energy has been mixed together, which is good, you know, so it's the first time we've really come. With uh, energy being mixed together, I think that's good. That's S-C-N-I. That's also uh, T-I-F-E. Definitely S-T-P-N-F-J uh, Quadra. Uh, and uh, he's still direct. He's still answering in the, in, the, uh, um, in the context of the question being asked. Uh, we know he's abstract. We know he's affiliative. So there you folks have it. Uh, Jason Bellamy is an INFJ. So let's move on to the next one right now. So... And uh, it's the top of the hour, so I am also going to be closing super chats. Although, if you want to outbid anyone, you may uh, you may super chat a bid if you would like. So, super chats are now closed. Super chats are now closed. Okay. Uh, which types are the most boring? Uh, that would be STJs. Uh, not gonna lie, unless they're like super awesome athletes, uh, then they're pretty boring. Just saying. That's that's my personal opinion. LOL. <laughs> Okay, so, okay, add eight dollars Canadian to mine, making eighteen Canadian or thirteen fifty seven USD uh, for uh, for Lev. Okay, thirteen fifty seven USD, uh, which would make Lev's uh, current top bid. So it looks like uh, Milo Kunis is next. Um, so awesome. We will do that one next, my goodness. Apparently 
I'm incapable of uh, spelling tonight. Up me, Mila Kunis and her on-screen BFF, Kate McKinnon, suddenly find themselves in the middle of an international conspiracy. When Mila, hi, hi. Are, you, are you two besties? Because it seems yes. like, I know that you didn't know each other before the movie, yeah. but there's a clear situation happening. Yeah, we fell in love. Did it was you? pretty instant. We it, got very lucky. You don't know what's going to happen, and sometimes you get put in these positions where you're like, I just wish that we just get along, and that's like best case scenario. Yeah. And, uh, and we yeah. actually fell in love. So it was wonderful. And when you signed on to the movie, you had obviously had heard of Kate McKinnon, and you'd see, but you guys had not ever worked together. Had you met? No. Uh, I signed on because I was a fan of hers. So I wanted to work with her, and yeah. I was like, you know what? I'll do it. I think she's awesome and super talented. And, um, and then we met at the table read. Yeah. We seemingly got along. And then uh, first day of production, um, we became best friends. <laughs> now, did you guys laugh all the time? I just picture you two. Yeah, we laugh nonstop. Kate does have a fake laugh, and I've said this before. <gasps> there's a fake Kate McKenna what laugh. What is it? Give it to me. Um, Show I can't, me. I can't reenact it, but there's two laughs. So from now on, when you interview her, you'll notice there's two separate laughs. One's a genuine laugh, and one's like, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm supposed to. <laughs> and I learned this very early on, and I was like, oh, hell no, Kate. No, no I, don't, I don't want your fake laugh. And so my goal was to always make her genuinely laugh, and so I could tell when I made her break for real and when I made her not. So now that you're besties, yeah. um, when we turn SNL when the season starts, can we find you? Will you it's be been there? 10 years of me not wanting to do SNL for not because Why? I, because it, um, you know, it's a platform that I think yeah. takes a very specific skill set. Like I think some people thrive in it and some people get by. You mean that monologue part or all of Just it? Just the whole the thing. The whole thing. Like yeah. you have to love it and have so much fun with yeah. it. And some people go on and they don't have fun with it and you can tell. Yeah. And um, and so I've always been really nervous about doing it. Now that I know somebody actually on it, I was like, Kate, here's the thing, Lauren, why don't you put us together? <laughs> yes. Which is, and I was like, then we'll, then it'll be fun. And so I'm going to start pushing for that concept. I like that. If Kate and I can do it together. All right. So the movie, you are, you fall in love with a guy you don't realize. So very initiating. Holy smokes, Alakunas is very initiating. Want to say movement, but don't want to say it quite yet, uh, but very initiating uh, initially. And uh, I really want to say pragmatic, but I want to hear more first, so. He's a spy and he dumps you. So now Spoiler you... alert. Sorry, did I give Guys, away? It was... I mean, it's yes. In the, it's in the then title. Then what happens? It's in the title, <laughs> the spy who dumped me. Okay. Touche. <laughs> so... Guys, it's about a spy who dumps me. And so, then... so this turns into a caper. The two of you are off and running. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, but they look like there were some pretty scary stunts. This didn't so, look like a nothing. Yeah, they were great stunts. It was the same stunt team that did... Um, the Bourne movies, the 007 films, and so our stunts are really elaborate and really big and beautiful. It's the same team that did the same stunts. They did this, they did that. Uh, SE and I, SE and I, There's lots of SE in there. So. And incredible. You just happen to have Kate McKinnon and I responding to the stunts versus a professional. <laughs> so you didn't have to actually get involved in that. We needed no skills whatsoever. We were a part of the stunts, but we didn't need to rehearse them yeah. because we're not pros. So we were like, ah! Be advised, guys, she could also be cognitive transitioned. Uh, so there's a chance that she may not actually be initiating, but actually responding. So we'll see how that goes. This is why we test against uh, direct uh, versus informative as well as uh, control versus movement. Not entirely sure that uh, she's informative. She actually seems pretty direct so far and might be like kind of transitioning into informative initiating movement as a starter type from a finisher type. This is what we similarly saw happen with Mr. John Brisson in the earlier stream this evening. So. Ah, that's pretty much what you get in the whole movie. <laughs> so Last Oh, and uh, to echo what was just said in the stream chat, guys, please give us like thumbs ups. Like we need likes, like we absolutely need likes. These videos are not actually going to make it to anyone if there's not enough likes for it. So please subscribe, please like uh, we, and comment while you're at it. Uh, 
it's really important uh, to us that you do that because we're not going to get anywhere uh, in getting this information out as a movement unless we ac actually you know, do, do our due diligence, right? So please do that. It would be very appreciated. I love no idea why it went full screen. When you guys are running. Yes, we did lots of running. <laughs> like, but we don't quite look like Tom Cruise either. No. So I wouldn't go in and being like, guys, we look like action stars. I mean, we are. So we wouldn't look like Tom Cruise either. And that's a very uh, F-I-T-E statement. So, so far it's looking like SFP and TJ Quadra. Uh, and I, I definitely am seeing direct uh, for sure uh, with her. So, yeah, it will be really interesting if she's like an INTJ. That would be... Very, very interesting. Uh, and I, I am very much leaning towards movement. She's all over the place in that chair, uh, constantly you know, being very movement oriented. So definitely looking at movement. So if it's direct movement, then we're looking at direct responding movements with a finisher. So we'll see how that goes. Are, but not the norm. Now, is it true that you're nowhere? But not the norm. That is a F-I-T-E statement because it's a T-E label, labeling the norm. On a different subject, nowhere on social media. That is like not your game. Not you, my you, game. You don't even look, you don't, you're not. Oh no, I look, don't get me wrong. Like I'm all about looking, I myself. Oh, you know, I always look, don't get me wrong. You know, okay, so don't get me wrong, TE statement, I always look. That is uh, an NISE statement as well. More evidence that she's F -S -S SFP and TJ Quattro. Don't um, subscribe to it. You don't, because? No. Uh, it, there's just so many reasons to it. I think I was just, A, late to the game to begin with. Okay. And so I must have been sleeping under a rock when everything kind of exploded. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, all right. And then, and then it became, the truth is, it's now part of your contract. So if you're an actor or whatever in this industry that they're like, well, you need to post this many posts and you need to do this many, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And so it's like a whole addendum to a contract that I was like, oh, didn't forget it. Like, I don't want to negotiate that. And so what she's saying here within her content, she's like, I'm being forced against my will to actually participate in social media. Right. Which, you know, I guess the stereotype is extroverts really like being in social media. But if she's really an INTJ and they're SE inferior, do they really, you know, how INTJ women are, right? Like, do they really want to have that much uh, social interaction with other people? You see what I'm saying? That's actually more evidence that she's actually responding uh, instead of uh, initiating per se. Because while she is talking to this interviewer, she's not actually initiating any new points or changing the direction of the conversation. She's staying on point within the context of the interviewer's initiation every single time. So definitely putting down a point for responding as a result of that. Uh, and she's definitely very, very movement. I am not seeing anything affiliative at all, uh, especially when her statements about you know being forced through a contract to do social media posts, etc. You know, it'd be like, oh yeah, that's the right thing to do, you know, for actors, blah blah blah. But she's not doing that. She's like, she's being pragmatic. Uh, she's very independent. It's like, I must have been sleeping under a rock. Not really something that she honestly cares about. She's also talking about contracts, etc. So, uh, and the way that she's talking about it. She's not really talking about what she gets out of it. She's just saying this is what happens. This is the process and the system we follow, which is a point for systematic as well. So let's keep going. And so I was like, I don't want to be on social media. So it's not a so it's just not a up to debate. But your hubby's on, right? Isn't that barely? But yeah, I mean, he was little. on it originally on Twitter when it was a forum to connect with fans. And then I think that the whole social media kind of took that's my husband. Look at you. Look at how too. cute he is. It's the only time we've ever gone down the red carpet <laughs> together. It's almost like we're in denial about being married. <laughs> um, that is not on the red carpet. That's backstage. Oh, look, that's also us. God, you guys have oh a lot God, of cute Oh my God, you photos. guys are so cute. Is he a fun dad, yes, by the way? Yes, he's the best is dad he? on the planet. Yes, what does he's he do? super dad. He's with the kids now. I'm here and he's <laughs> taking the kids, hopefully, right now, what is it in LA? He's probably waking up with two kids, he, getting he them ready. It. He does the whole probably Mabella? having a meltdown. Yeah. So like, where is it? Where is it right now? It's also SE as well. Not like, there's no like SI there whatsoever. <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, and uh, definitely uh, systematic. Oh, there's cute photos. There's also SE and I as well. Uh, very movement, uh, very direct, uh, still responding within the uh, the context of what's unfolding before her direct response movement. So she's a finisher, uh, SFP, NTJ Quadra, uh, based on that alone. So ergo, it's already pretty freaking obvious. Mila Kunis is an INTJ, folks. INTJ, there you go. Shocking, because I did not expect that either. So pretty interesting how uh, these things work out. And uh, 
She was uh, ESFP cognitive transitioning for the majority of that interview, uh, which is why she was coming off ESFP. But remember folks, the ego still bleeds in regardless of cognitive transition. It's best to keep track of that uh, as well. Um, so, yes, isn't CS Joseph an ENTJ, ESTJ? I mean, yeah, if you're living under a rock, um, so. No, I am with my dream girl already, Mr. Ryan Whiteman. Uh, her name is Railgun, and she is a total badass. Uh, and, uh, much uh, to my happiness, she is cooking turkey uh, tacos right now, and uh, I am going to go enjoy those turkey tacos. Um, doing more of a plant-based diet these days, but uh, tonight we're splurging on uh, turkey tacos, because why not? Um, so... Let's see what's next here. All right, so that was Myla Kunis, which is pretty cool. Um, so we got a couple of $12 ones out there. Uh, so we got Delilah Renee, um, and we did NF the Rapper, and then we have uh, Chad Crandall, but Delilah came in first. So Delilah Renee it is. Delilah Renee is the next one for us. So. Okay. Delilah Renee. Awesome. Cool. Let's get to it. Railgun is a screen name and a uh, nickname. Well, of course, they're making secret accounts, Periani. Like, they, uh, I mean, as bad as people, as certain people look already, I mean, they don't want to make themselves look even worse. I mean, hashtag credibility, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all right, so uh, let's see here. Delilah uh, Renee. Hopefully, this works out good. Uh, radio host Delilah's back on the air. A radio star Delilah opens up about family and their book. I really hope this is actually uh, CNN profiles, Delilah Renee. Um, I really hope this is who we're talking about. <laughs> uh, like, I really hope so. Uh, radio host Delilah. Delilah gives great advice. Um, iconic radio host. I think this sounds like, uh, let's see this. Good morning to you. I'm Gail King. We're in the CBS This Morning Toyota Green Room, live and in color with radio icon. What's your name? Delilah. <laughs> yeah. You got to sing it. I wow. know, you really do. But you just wow, is this like an ENFJ? Because she looks like an ENFJ woman to me. I mean, like, oh, are we looking at an ENFJ right now? She's just initiated and being super direct like that, but also control at the same time. Like, holy smokes. It's almost like freaking obvious. So yeah, direct initiating control. And then, yeah, I mean, look at how she's dressed. That's just so S-E, like so S-E, um, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll continue from there. It's so funny, Delilah, I said, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna do it, because I know everybody comes up to you and goes, Delilah, but you can't help it when you I see love it. it. I love it. It doesn't get old to you? No, never, never, so never, never. It's Delilah. Millions tune in every week to hear her give advice to the love, the love Lauren, and those who are really still looking for love in all the wrong places. Her off-air life is still full of love, too. She's the mother of 13 kids. I hear soon to be 14. Soon to be 14. But you're in the God process willing. of adopting another one. Uh, Ten of her children are adopted, and in her new memoir, it's called One Heart at a Time. She opens up about some of the challenges she's faced over the years, including the loss of her 18-year-old son, Zach, to suicide last year. Welcome, Delilah. Thank you. You write a lot about Zach. Tell us his full name. I love his name. Zachariah Miguel. All right, the unknown. If you want to know the difference between uh, control versus movement, look at it this way. Control equals outcome, and being outcome-focused and caring about outcomes, uh, whereas... Uh, Movement types care about the order or the process with which to reach an outcome, uh, whereas uh, an outcome person doesn't care the process or the order to get to the outcome. I always talk about order determines outcome, right? Movement begets the outcome. Uh, so people are more outcome focused and care less about uh, the movement or the order or the process to get to said outcome Whereas movement types care about the process or the order which to get to any outcome That's the difference between control versus movement right there It just so happens that movement types move very quickly uh, because uh, 
of those uh, being process oriented or because um, they have a master process, et cetera. That's the difference. So there you have it. Um. Rene Ortega. Uh. So, or Zach Attack. Yes. I know Zach Attack. Zach I like. Attack. I'm glad that you can talk about him and smile Direct because a year is still initiating a time SE and I. for something that caused you such pain. But I'm curious about Zach because you said he knew he was loved. He knew that he was surrounded by people that cared about him, and that it was just a series of circumstances. You said that led us to seek help that got him on the medication. Mm -hmm. He had three very traumatic things happen in a very short period, compressed period of time. Mm -hmm. um, he like what happened? wrecked his car mm -hmm. into the side of a police officer. Not good. Not good. Um, he was driving in a storm, totally an accident, was not an on purpose, was an experienced driver in a horrible storm. Mm -hmm. um, but he thought he had killed or injured the man terribly because he hit his head and there was a lot of She's talking about someone else's experience. How can she be an ESFJ who talks only about their own experience? Like, seriously, how can you draw that conclusion, Mr. Flash? Like, why? Like, how are you able to draw that conclusion? She's talking about somebody else. She's not talking about herself, right? Of blood. Mm -hmm. And he never drove again, even though the man was fine. Mm -hmm. um, it was very pressure. jarring to him. It was so jarring that he thought he hurt somebody he never drove again mm -hmm. um which limited his life because his father and i lived like which limited his life that's very she's a very affiliative point of view uh talking about the people doing the right thing uh and uh, you can almost kind of feel the guilt off it it's very fe statement you know this bad thing happened to this person you know i'm very empathetic towards them etc very TIFE, so as we can see, you know, we're looking at STP NFJ Quadra just based off the cognitive uh, axis analysis by default. But it, automatically, she's an ENFJ. But uh, let's let's just keep going. So, oh, but her hair is ESFJ though. By what standard, with which, what rubric or metric, Mwanka Vision, are you actually using to say that her hair is ESFJ? Like honestly, like. Uh, like honestly, how how are, do you do you literally have like a hair chart in your room somewhere that you're just using to analyze uh you know women's hair with? I mean, are you a women's hair expert? I mean, that's kind of a little odd, don't you think? It was an hour and a half driving, but it's three hours by public transportation, so that altered his life. Um, he moved out. That of the altered farm. his life. He Se. His whole life. He, he moved out of the farm. Lives his life. That's S.E. Spend his senior year with his dad. Spend his senior year with his dad. That's S.E. You and his dad were no longer together. Right. Yeah. We, we divorced when he was... Uh, we divorced. Was, uh, S.E. Walking. Mm -hmm. So he had never really spent uh, as much time with his dad as he had hoped to. Yeah, and spent as so, much time with his dad as he had hoped to. S.E. He He was the life of the party. He was... You said he was alive. Life of the party. S.E. plus F.E. I got a kick about reading about him because one day he invited 40 people over for lunch. Yeah, we went, oh, there was an African children's choir performing at our church, and after... Yeah, I'm not going back to NI because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter going back to NI, guys. It doesn't matter because an SE user automatically means you have NI within your top four functions of your ego, okay? So based on that, you automatically, using logic, can assume that NI is in the top four functions, provided SE is in the top four function because they are on an axis, right? So please watch season one playlist on this YouTube channel or season five, Cognitive Synchronicity, where it talks about cognitive access. I'm going to be going deeper in cognitive access in, uh, in season 18, but functions turn on an axis with each other. And as a result, if they're an SE user, it's automatically implied that I'm also saying they're an NI user, right? They performed. The director came up to me and said, Delilah, that was so nice of you. I said, Oh, oh that's so, so nice of you, Delilah. Look at all the recognition I'm getting because I'm an FE user talking about my recognition. Ma recognition, yo. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, oh, as I continue to go like SE one million times, like, holy smokes. And I'm being all direct and initiate as I initiate additional points and control about it. Like, I don't even need to look at temperaments. Direct initiating control and STP NFJ quadra, the only quadra there is that's direct initiating control. It just happens to be ENFJ. So there you guys have it. Delilah is an ENFJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. So... 
Ding, ding, ding. Ma recognition. Okay. Let's see here. All right, so the next one is uh, $12 US, which is Chad Crandall. Chad Crandall, awesome. Let's see here, Chad Crandall. That's true. ESTP is still direct initiating control. That's a very good point. Very, very good point. But we already knew she was affiliative, so I forgot to bring up that point. So thank you for correcting me. Chad Crandall um, interview. WSS interviews Chad Crandall. Uh, typing Lovelu leads to larger uh, typology uh, problems. Okay, that's interesting. So looks like Chad Crandall is like this typologist person from the World Socionic Society. That's pretty cool. Or get to typing one of these guys. Awesome. I had a reasonably straightforward interview with Chad uh, to confirm he's an SLE or another type. Okay, fair enough. Let's... Uh, Let's take a look. I think this will be fun. Hello. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Chad. How are you doing, Chad? I'm doing regular life, I guess. So the example is five or six years ago, probably more now. Yeah, I'd say five years ago. I was running this fitness camp, and ultimately what happened was that one of the people had uh, pushed themselves too hard, overexerted themselves, and started having a hyperventilating and having a panic attack while hyperventilating. While everybody else was freaking out, I was able to calm that person down and take immediate control of the situation and not have to escalate the situation further and able to get that person out of it while remaining calm the entire time. Hmm. And so I think that that has a lot to do with the ability to remain calm in crisis situations. And it's very, very frequent for me. Same with car accidents or anything. It's like, oh, that's super down. initiating quite, quite frequently. Hmm. And you say that's a, a position of great confidence for you that you don't you you, you, talk, do you feel they take that for granted or has there been any time where that hasn't worked out for you as you'd have liked uh it almost always works out for me okay that's good um now as, as i said before before you were moved to a startup you were a coach what made you want to be a coach i like the uh, idea of empowering others Mm -hmm. The idea. Of I think I was a little illness. misguided in the decision, though. I think I was wanting to be a coach because I was looking to um, help others, but I think it was just so much of a small scale that I didn't really enjoy the one-on-one. -on -one. I'm I like public speaking. I like big, large groups of people. So for me, the one-on-one -on -one was too slow, and I didn't enjoy that aspect. I did enjoy the results I was able to produce, but I did not enjoy uh, results I was able to produce. That's a control I statement. Really something I could scale. So do you say that you're more of a performer? Uh, yes, uh, definitely a public speaker. Mm, public speaker. Yes, definitely so, a public speaker. Um, why SNI. did you hesitate when I said performer? Because I thought immediately of like art, art like dance. And I'm not, I'm not an artist. I wouldn't call myself an artist. Mm. I would definitely call myself, though, a public speaker and someone who is very comfortable on stage. OK. So co comfortable speaking in the, in the public eye. Um, not someone who just wants to say entertain. Correct. Art, right? It's with a purpose. I don't like doing pointless entertainment. I'm not a mm. court jester, you know. Like, yeah. My job is to get the information out or whatever it is that the. the yes, we're of back. The Drop frames suck. I'm do installing a new modem tonight. But also to have fun while doing it and able to motivate or influence crowds, which is what I really like to do. I see. So, what well, one thing that makes me wonder there. What caused you to choose startup rather than, say, going towards motivational speaking? Well, that could be included in the startup, but mm -hmm. I've shied away from motivational speaking because I haven't seen the success that I'd like to see before I got into motivational speaking. Ah, uh, again, another control statement, another control statement, and he's being really direct. This guy is direct initiating control, straight up. He's talking about the results. I got a better result when I went. Uh, I got a better outcome when I got into motivational speaking, et cetera, right? And I'm a coach, right? A, a very SE and I statement. It's probably like SE child. There's a good chance of that. But yeah, definitely a direct initiative control uh, so far. Yeah, I get it. The uh, the, la the lag sucks, but I'm installing a, uh, a new modem because this modem that we have is absolutely terrible. So, uh, yeah. Let's keep going here. Uh, definitely gonna 
I'm going to keep going here. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So you, would you, does that mean that motivational speak is more of a future possibility? Definitely. Mm, I see. Um, I'm geared, uh, volunteered in this information, but definitely politics is and initiating. Is, so really moving into the political arena is probably where I'm going. Ah, political arenas. Wonderful. So going towards maybe governorship, se um, senator? We'll find out. I see. Very good. Um, we will find out. S -E -N -I. I dab dab a little bit in politics myself. Um, hmm, let me think. Oh, okay, so you mentioned empowerment. So what is empowerment to you? Being able to bring others to their own level of accountability. and It's an Eris surfboard. And in fact, I think it's like the best possible model of Eris surfboard that you can actually get. My INTJ friend, Doug, told me to get it. So uh, that's why I went with it. I was just trusting his judgment on that because he's always been pretty good with tech. So hopefully the Eris surfboard would do a lot better than this um, for sure. And, and responsibility, giving them power to be able to execute that things that they want to do and they tend to get in their own way. But to me, mm -hmm. it's like I don't, I'm less on depending on others and being able to muster the energy or force to do it yourself. And I feel that a lot of people can't do, do that. it they yourself. Really it's big pragmatic. Being able to get things done on their own. So teaching them how to figure out a way to make those things a reality, especially when it comes to goal attainment. A way to make those things a reality. How can I goal attainment, control. How can I help these person achieve their goals? Okay. It's all about so achievement. It's literally, the, which the, is the power to achieve what you set out to do, and not rely on others for it. Hmm. Yep, makes sense. Um, but it's interesting there that you have the theme of getting people to be able to do things better themselves. At the same time, you're not someone who is comfortable just working on your own, but you want want to be involved and connected with other people. Correct. It's like I can still do the things on my own, but I enjoy the fun of being able to work and brainstorm with other people. Mm. I don't feel the need to depend on others to get a job done. I'll do it my, on my own, which I've done my whole life, but I have much more. I don't need to depend on others to get the job done. I've been doing it my whole life. That's pragmatic, guys. That's pragmatic. LOL. This guy sounds like an INTP focused ENTJ. Very interesting how that works. Very, very interesting. And he's following a system. He's following a system. So yeah, he's definitely an NT and he's SFP NTJ Quadra, direct initiating control. So it's pretty obvious folks, uh, Chad Crandall's an ENTJ. So there you have it. So awesome. Cool. And let's see what is next. Guys, super chats are closed. Please notice the sign on the stream that says closed. Okay, uh, what's next here? Um, we did Chad Crandall is at twelve dollars. So the next one is going to be a ten dollar one. So Brian May from Queen. Okay, Sophie C. Brian May from Queen. Let's do that one. Uh, Brian May uh, interview. Cool. All right, Roger Taylor. Brian May interviews seventies and eighties. Now let's do. Uh, let's make it hard. Let's make it. Let's do hard mode. The older he is, the, this is the more integrated he is. Right. So. artist Ben Riley he we had house watching a TV about that big yeah. and there it was you know one giant step for a man one giant nah, one small step for a man one, one giant, giant step for one giant leap for me yeah and I met uh, Neil Armstrong many years later at Starmus and had breakfast with him way up the top of the caldera in La Palma wow. and he was the most delightful modest shy spiritual man I'll never forget the whole yeah. thing yeah Sorry to bring you back down to earth with us, Lot. Yeah. Um, because that's how we did a lot of fun. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> we should we have to talk about your new single, New Horizons, which you launched from the NASA control center in Maryland, which is a, a 
different yeah. place to launch a it, single. It's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, Why on then? New Year's Day, because they happen to be doing their flyby actually on, on New Year's Day of Ultima Thule, which is the furthest away object that anyone has ever uh, visited. It's four billion miles away. Oh, wow. And they guided this thing over 12 years. You can see the launch here. They guided it over 12 years to an accuracy of a couple of hundred miles away at four billion miles and got the most in Wow. That's like SCNI, if I've ever, uh, ever heard of it, I'm talking about the launch and how it's going to. Uh... It's also talking about Neil Armstrong and the experience that he had, the shared experience he had with Neil Armstrong. So. Definitely going to be SCNI and i with uh, Ryan May. So, yeah, we'll see if he, he might be informative. Incredible pictures and data from it. So now we know a little bit about this amazing Well, place. And this was really significant to you, wasn't it? I mean, you felt it was worthy of a song because it's something that you've been waiting for for a long time. You, you know, it was very exciting. Yeah, it? I've been with the team. You know, I collaborate with the team. It's a great honour for me. Uh, and I was there when they did their flyby of Pluto, which was also a monumental thing. Nobody had any idea of what Pluto looked like until these guys wow. flew by. And I felt like I was in the probe there looking at it. You know? yeah. Nobody had any idea of what it looks like. That is an F-I-T-E statement, S-E-N-I as well. And I was able to make a 3D picture from that because 3D is my passion. Yeah, well. thanks. Oh, we yeah. Will be so, and I love these guys. And uh, actually, Alan Stern, who's the, the big boss man of this NASA. He keeps dropping. Yes, SI users do say, uh, uh, do say shared experiences with other people, but there's a lot more going on here. Like, he keeps talking about other people. He's not talking about himself. An SI user primarily, remember guys, you know, dominant versus recessive traits, right? Just like with genetics, dominant or recessive alleles. What is dominating their conversation? What's dominating how they're interacting? What's the dominant part, okay? So like, stop, stop like assuming that I'm saying, oh, SI users never say this or SI users never say this. It's not about that. What are they saying the most? Okay, that's what it's about, all right? So, so keep that in mind, right? When are you going to type Frank James? I guess maybe when I'm paid to do it, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's probably when I'll do it. It's funny, like no one seems to be interested in, uh, in forking over a super chat for that, you know, even though they're closed right now. Everyone claims they're going to, but then they never actually do. So I'm just waiting. I'll be patient. I can be patient. I got a bunch of other people to type. I'm not worried about it, so. Look at his hair. <laughs> the mission said, can you write us a song? And I said, what is, what is it about? He said, Ultima Thule. I said, what the hell rhymes with Ultima Thule? <laughs> I can't do this. And then I went away and I thought, no, New Horizons, which is the name of the mission. Yeah. That in, that's a very inspiring phrase. And yeah. I thought, what I'm doing is I'm writing this song, not just about the mission, but about man's desire to learn and reach out and explore, which is in, a, in us all, I think. It sounds epic. Let's uh, hear a little. Just reach out and explore, which is in us all. That's what I think. Very abstract. Very, very abstract and i could actually make an argument for tife so we'll verify against that as well but definitely seni he's just been seni this entire time so let's uh let's keep going i'm gonna say i don't know i'm seeing some movement too so let's keep going though we'll clip of it shall we okay the revelations of new horizons may help us to understand better how our solar system was formed Right out. Yeah, um, you can download this as well, though. I mean, yes. excellent, and, and you can see the movie on YouTube, the whole thing. Brilliant. And now the movie, in a short time, will include what they actually. You can go see this on YouTube, the whole thing. Okay, so that's uh, also S E N I. I think we've basically figured that out um, in terms of like uh, which cognitive access. Actually, saw for, the final picture for his perception functions of Ultima Thule, All right. which no one expected. It's an incredible thing. It's like two things stuck together, a bilobate asteroid. Yeah, that's it there, isn't it? I mean, to, to layman, that yeah. doesn't... Look, Wonkavision, don't expect other people to understand what you're doing because not everyone in this chat is an SE user, especially, like, I'm not an SE user, so I'm not going to sit there and interpret what you're trying to do or what your motive is behind what you're saying. I mean, you may do that to other people because that's how you interface with other people, so 
I would appreciate it if you didn't judge other people by like your own standard. You actually try to like learn what other people's standards are first and then judge them accordingly. That way we do the same to you, right? Because hashtag mutual understanding. Because had you understood that, you wouldn't have reacted so negatively and saying like, oh, you know, this was just a joke, you know? And it's like, okay, really, was it just a joke? Because like, it's not actually useful, right? So think about that, like, you can't just deflect like that and be like, oh, you know, this is a joke because that, that actually kind of shows like a little bit of dishonesty, you know what I'm saying? So like, when you're gonna joke like that, like, please make it very obvious you're gonna joke because there's people like there out me who like have their heads in the sand when it comes to what other people are doing because I have no concept of what other people are doing. I can only figure out what I'm doing because I'm an SI user, right? So. Okay, I'm acting like a fool because nice ad hominem because you can't take some criticism. Come on. Look, mm. that's very Real, exciting, it? yeah. isn't it? It's incredible, isn't it? The pictures are so beautiful. Yeah. How, 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 the pictures are so beautiful. S-E, very S-E. Far away? It's four billion miles. Four billion ago. miles. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. And um, Brian, we're going to get into... SE users are much better at taking jokes, yes, as well as giving jokes. 3D later with you, um, all about your 3D. new book. Neither of you two are strangers to dressing up, are you? We know now then you, Joe. No, I don't, ever. Halloween. <laughs> I love a frock. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Brian, what about you? Because you and the I Want to Break Free video and oh. also heels and curlers. Yes. yes, me. Did you need convincing to get into that no, outfit? No, not for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's great fun. It was the most fun we ever had making a video. It was hilarious. When people say it's an obvious joke, the word obvious is actually attached to SE users. So people who say the word obvious, it's typically SE users, statistically, primarily, who say the word obvious. What's obvious to you is not obvious to everybody. Just saying. And just because I'm a minority, doesn't mean, you know, you could be like, oh, hey, you know, that's obvious. Not necessarily. Know your audience. Yes, yeah, we loved it. And everybody got the joke in this country. Not every country in the world got it. No, yeah. Yeah. no sense of humor, see. No, but it was great. And I think, uh, you know, it was a milestone in our career, wasn't it? It was indeed. Absolutely. Because you are now this new consumer expert, we asked Brian and... Follow me urgently. Are you done? Almost. Thank you. So I could Brilliant. message them, and I yeah. sent them. Basically, I sent them a, an e, a, a, a tweet, a DM, um, which I, in which I tried to get as many Queen songs in as possible. <laughs> so I'm gonna switch to a different interview. Let's see here, behind the scenes interview. We were a little reluctant in the beginning because you know it's difficult to make a film that would do Freddie justice. And what happened over the years, because it was suggested to us a lot, what happened over the years was that to us lot. It's all if you didn't get involved, then somebody else would do it, and, and then you wouldn't be able to protect Freddie's... We couldn't uh, protect Freddie's uh, legacy. And, uh, legacy. It's an F-E-T-I yeah, statement. So we got involved, yeah. and it's a long journey. It's, it's, probably nearly it's also affiliative, focusing on doing the right thing. People getting things ready, trying to get things ready. Direct. I think a lot of people, they think about Freddie, yeah, and the, the, the media tend to think, oh, flamboyant, whatever, you know. And they remember him for other things, and they tend to forget that he was a brilliant musician. I think the film does pay good attention to the fact that Freddie was a real, real great musician. We all felt we wanted to portray Freddie's humanity, to portray him as a human being, like Roger says. As portray his humanity. Portray him as a as a human being, uh, affiliative, affiliative, affiliative. Also abstract, as well. And definitely, uh, definitely movement for sure. Constantly talking about the process, not necessarily very outcome focused. As a musician, and um, it had to be truthful, and it had to be not too indulgent. And it had to be watchable and nothing. It had to be truthful, it had not to be indulgent, it had to be watchable. Those are all affiliative statements focusing on doing the right thing and doing it together as a team, right? So, and he's still being uh, direct and choosing his uh, position within the context of the conversation. I think Freddie would say, number one, it had to be entertaining, you know, and I think you have to laugh, you have to cry, and I believe people will do in this movie. 
casting Ronnie in, in the role of, of Freddy uh, absolutely blew us away the first time we met him. We, we, we kind of saw Freddy in him and we could sense his passion and everything was put together around that, I guess. All the way down the cast and the whole production team, you feel this passion. They all felt it was something exceptional. Constantly talking about passion, exceptionality. Uh, it's very uh, interest-based uh, because it's just re it's like saying what what everyone is getting out of the situation is very movement. So yeah, Brian May uh, definitely. Uh, he's also saying facts. He's not really talking about his self-importance at all. It's all about other people. It's all about uh, Rami. It's all about uh, it's all about Freddie, etc. Tife statements and saying it in the form of facts, etc. Uh, so anyway, with that being said, Brian May is definitely an INFJ, which, uh, interestingly enough, is what the audience had uh, initially suggested. So that's awesome. Awesome. Definitely an INFJ for Mr. Brian May. So, cool.